25 Most Memorable Quotes from the Toy Story Movies Toy Story helped to launch Pixar as a titan of the animation world, and the best Toy Story quotes throughout the franchise show the humor and heart of these movies. The story of Woody, Buzz, and the other toys in Andy's room has captured the hearts of fans, delivering four movies to date with the unexpected announcement of Toy Story 5 proves that Pixar is reluctant to let this franchise go. It's not surprising they want more given the Toy Story quotes that have stayed with fans and made these movies so beloved. The simple premise of exploring what toys do when humans are not around is a fun jumping off point. However, the movies have gone far beyond by looking at the enemies to friends relationship between Woody and Buzz, dealing with a child outgrowing their toys, and the purpose these toys have in the world. The best Toy Story quotes reflect all these aspects of the movies, leaving audiences laughing and crying along the way. The upcoming Toy Story 5 will only add to these great franchise lines. Breaks down the best movies of all time, from old classics to modern masterpieces across multiple genres of cinema. The entire Toy Story franchise has Woody and the others going to great lengths to hide the fact that they are alive. However, they do break that rule one special time to teach the adolescent villain Sid a lesson. In the first movie, Sid takes his toys and breaks many of them to create new monstrosities. He uses things like firecrackers to blow other toys up. This quote happens when the toys show that they are real beings with feelings and that they can feel pain and hurt and they set out to prove a point to Sid. Many fans have pointed out that Sid didn't really do anything wrong when he destroyed his toys, as they were just plastic objects to him. That doesn't stop this moment from being any more satisfying as Sid's mistreated toys suddenly rise from the grave with Woody giving this final warning that seems to drive the point home. It is a horrific moment and one that possibly scarred young Sid forever. Toy Story 2 introduced Woody's Roundup, the western show where Toy Story's Woody originated from. Also introduced is his Roundup gang, which includes the lovable and loyal horse named Bullseye. Woody is filled with pride and wonder seeing himself in action on the beloved children's series and, in a charming moment at the end, he adopts his catchphrase from the series, Ride Like the Wind, Bullseye as he and his trusty horse charge into action. Though the popularity of Woody's roundup ended, Woody gets to be that cowboy hero in his own way. It is a nice moment because Woody never really knew anything about his past, only focusing on his life with Andy. The fact that he realizes the history of his character is a nice moment and the fact that he is finally able to experience that moment is something that really helps his character develop leading to his eventual ability to become independent in the fourth movie. The alien toys are introduced in the first Toy Story movie as a franchise cult-like group of prizes inside the claw machine at Pizza Planet. The way the toys look at the claw as some higher power who selects the chosen ones is a hilarious bit of world building in this universe. The way the aliens exclaim this in unison makes it even funnier. However, the gag gets a wonderful callback later in the franchise. It is the aliens who save Woody and the others from their fiery fate in Toy Story 3 with a crane, proudly declaring the claw. As they save the day. The ways the later Toy Story movies call back to moments like this in smart ways makes them a joy to watch for older fans. The juxtaposition between the aliens looking at the claw as a higher power to the point where they control the claw is a small moment that shows the toys growing and becoming more important as the series rolls on. There are some great Toy Story villains throughout the franchise, but the most detestable is easily Lotso, the cuddly teddy bear who is also a cruel and vindicative antagonist. After getting replaced by his former kid, Lotso doesn't want anyone to be happy with their kid. He ends up at the trash dump with Woody and the others, and despite proving how evil he is already, Woody saves his life. It seems like Lotso could be heading for redemption as he has the opportunity to save the others, but instead mocks Woody and leaves them to be destroyed. It is a shockingly dark moment that cemented him as a great Disney villain. This is also a really sad moment because it shows that Lotso was ruined so many years before my being shunned, cast aside, and neglected. When Woody was discarded, he fought to get back to his kid. For Lotso, he just gave up and became the villain in his own story. 
the relationship between Woody and Bo Peep was a fun little detail in the other movies, but it is made much more significant in Toy Story 4. The opening scene of the film shows just how important Bo Peep is to Woody as there is a flashback to the day she was given away. As Woody comes out to talk to her as she waits in the box to be taken away, she suggests he get in the box as well. For a moment, Woody considers joining her and leaving Andy. It is a heartbreaking moment as his responsibilities to Andy have to come before his love for her. It is also another sobering moment that these toys, even though they are intelligent and have their own lives to live on their own, are at the mercy of the kids, and the parents, who control where they live, even if it is a dark, musty attic. For Bo Peep, she offers Woody a way out, but he still wouldn't have his freedom even if he leaves with her. Pull on Woody's string, and a variety of phrases will be shouted out by the toy. One Toy Story quote that has been repeated across the franchise is You're my favorite deputy. It's a simple phrase that would have been chosen by the toy cowboy manufacturer. Within the context of the story, it has a much larger meaning, though. It's a saying that includes the child in Woody's world and allows them to feel loved. It initially creates a bond between Woody and Andy, before Bonnie learns that she now has the new deputy in town. Woody takes his place as Andy's protector in the Toy Story franchise, and it is likely because he has heard this quote so many times, and even Andy understands that it means that Woody is in charge. It shows who the real leader is, even if Woody still has a lot to learn about himself before the franchise is finished with him. Andy's appearance changes throughout the Toy Story movies and his feelings toward his toys also evolved over time. Nothing resonated more than the young adult Andy going off to college and saying goodbye to his friends the toys that spent so much time with him. Woody is very concerned with the changes happening in Toy Story 3, but he makes a point of saying I can't stop Andy from growing up, but I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's a poignant moment that paints this team much like a family. Woody has grown a lot since the first movie. He has learned that he can share Andy's love with Buzz and he also understands that a day will come when Andy won't need them anymore. Andy is growing up, and Woody is self-aware enough to understand that it was his job to help along the way, but like parents, one day it will be time to let go and watch Andy make it on his own. Sid was the main antagonist of the original Toy Story. He was a terrifying creation of Pixar, who tortured and destroyed toys as a hobby. Woody and Buzz were trapped in his house, awaiting their dark fate, so a moment of levity is needed from the script to add some humor to the situation. After watching Sid's disturbing experiments Buzz remarks that I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. It's a hilarious moment that cuts through some of the tension, although the reality of the situation effectively sets in after this Toy Story quote. This is also a funny moment because it shows how much Buzz has to learn about the real world. Since he was one of the last ones to understand that he was a toy, he looked at everything in a logical and unimaginative manner. When he makes this comment about a child, it is funny, but it also shows that Buzz is not ready yet to survive in the real world. Toy Story 3 sees the gang venture to Sunnyside Daycare Center, where they quickly learn that playtime isn't always fun. Some of the younger kids simply didn't know how to look after the toys properly and Mr. Potato Head realizes the horror of the situation in a funny moment. After disappearing for some time, Mr. Potato Head reveals that he got left behind in the sandpit. He describes his harrowing experience as being cold and dark. Nothing but sand and a couple of Lincoln logs. Of course, those paying attention will know that those probably weren't Lincoln logs. This is a moment that shows how frightening it can be when a toy is left behind, as Mr. Potato Head has no idea if he will be saved. However, since these movies need to add humor to offset the fearful moments, the joke about what he saw in the sand pit was added, and it really helps lighten the mood. Some of the most memorable side characters in the Toy Story movies are the space aliens. Introduced in the first movie as toys in the crane machine at Pizza Planet, they reappear in Toy Story 2 when Mr. Potato Head saves their lives. Their gratitude spoken in unison to their savior is funny enough as it shows that the aliens are as delusional as Buzz was in the first movie, 
but the fact that they continue repeating their thanks over and over adds to the hilarity. However, the joke is made even funnier in Toy Story 3, set years later, when they are still thanking Mr. Potato Head. When the aliens save everyone else later with their claw, they show that they are more than willing to repay the favor. This is yet another moment in the series when the toys grow and develop as characters, understanding their place in the world and knowing that they play a big role in their own existence. The final goodbye between Woody and Buzz in Toy Story 4 is a really beautiful moment. Woody is about to leave Bo Peep behind and join the rest of Bonnie's toys on the RV when Buzz tells him, she'll be okay. For a second, both Woody and the audience think that Buzz is talking about Bo Peep, but then Buzz adds, Bonnie will be okay. He can see that Woody's place is with Bo, and Bonnie will be fine without him, so he encourages his old friend to follow his heart. Toy Story 4 is a love story between Woody and Bo Peep in many ways and Buzz allows them to have their happy ending. This is the biggest moment in Woody's transition from a toy that only exists to care for his kid to a toy who realizes that his job is done when Andy leaves for college, and he can finally start to live for himself. The movies are not just about kids giving up toys, but parents watching their kids grow up. Soon, it is time to let go, and Woody realizes the time is now. The existential crisis faced by the incredibly quotable Forky in Toy Story 4 is one of the loftiest and most philosophical storylines from the franchise. When Bonnie glues Google eyes and pipe cleaner arms to a spork and calls him Forky, he gains sentience as a toy. However, he's not supposed to be sentient. He's not supposed to have thoughts. And that alone is enough to terrify him, as Forky comes to terms with his own existence and makes sense of being more than just a piece of trash. This moment adds deeper meaning to the Toy Story quote. The franchise starts with toys kids love and care for, and the toys care for the kids as well. They are toys but this switches gears and has a kid create a toy that isn't supposed to be a toy, and it has no idea what life is all about. Forky's story also shows that someone can change into something different later in life, and at that point, people just need to accept that is who they are now. Forky is no longer trash. He is a toy. While Toy Story 4 has a story worth telling and concluded in a really poignant way, it didn't quite beat the bittersweet emotion of Toy Story 3's ending. As Andy leaves his toys with Bonnie and drives off to start his college education, Woody watches his kid's car disappear over the horizon and says, So long, partner. It's a really heartfelt moment that wrapped up the Toy Story saga, seemingly, in the perfect way. Of course, with news of Toy Story 5, it seems this was not the end after all. Woody spent his entire life with one purpose. He was Andy's favorite toy. He had to be there for him through all his tough moments as a child and was a comforting possession for a child growing into a young adult. However, soon, Woody realized that Andy was growing up and didn't need to be cared for anymore. It was time to let him go, and Woody bid him farewell. Once again, this parallels parents losing their kids but letting them go and watching them become adults in their own right. Arguably, the most memorable new character added to the Toy Story ensemble in last year's fourth installment except for maybe Forky is Duke Kaboom. He is voiced by Keanu Reeves, who actually contributed many ideas to the Toy Story character's personality. He's an evil Knievel-type daredevil toy on a stunt motorcycle who's filled with remorse as he's unable to perform the stunts that his commercials promised he could do. By the end of the movie, he proves himself by pulling off an amazing jump to save the day. There are many moments in the franchise where fans can watch their favorite characters grow and develop and find their true purpose. For Duke Kaboom, he only gets one movie, and in his small amount of screen time, Duke is able to do the same thing that Woody did through four movies. He finally figured out his place and was finally able to do the one thing he never dreamed was possible. Between a depressed penguin, a proudly Canadian stuntman, and a sentient spork, the Toy Story franchise doesn't overuse its best characters. When Woody leaves the group to stay with Bo Peep at the fairground, Buzz breaks the news to the rest of the gang. 
Rex asks if this means that Woody is a lost toy which the sheriff thought would be the worst thing in the world back in the first movie and Buzz says, on a more symbolic front, he's not lost. Not anymore. It suggests a finality to Woody's arc in the franchise, allowing him to find his own purpose in life outside of just being a toy and finding something he always wanted. This is a poignant moment as ever since the first movie, Woody has taken it upon himself to keep all the toys together for Andy, and then later for Bonnie. If one toy gets lost, Woody takes it upon himself to set out to find them and bring them back. He has taught all his friends the same lessons no toy is left behind. However, Buzz understands that things are different this time. Woody isn't lost as he's finally found his purpose after Andy. Just like Woody let Andy go, Buzz is not letting Woody go. As nice as it is to see Woody and Buzz eventually become friends, some of the best moments in the first movie are when they are arguing. When Woody becomes a lost toy and is stranded at the gas station with Buzz, he panics. It is only made worse when Buzz continues on with his Space Ranger nonsense. After Woody completely loses it on him, Buzz maintains his calm and dignified persona while delivering one of the most biting insults in movie history. Woody starts off the franchise not aware of how self-righteous he is. He believes that everything is an emergency that needs to be solved and he feels he is the only person equipped to deal with the problems. This makes him seem a little unhinged and broken. He finally starts to calm down in later movies, but here he is still someone who thinks that every small problem is a mountain he must climb. Buzz doesn't have this problem, and seeing Woody get overworked makes him sad. Toy Story 3 introduces a lot of new toys at Sunnyside Daycare Center, most of whom see Andy's toys as toddler fodder. This includes the hulky toy chunk who attempts to 